cryptid, as defined by Merriam-Webster, is an animal that has been claimed to exist, but never proven to exist. But what does the burden of proof in this scenario look like? Does a video or photograph prove its existence? Or does there need to be more like a physical specimen, DNA, or an expert's testimony? As you watch today's video, let me know if you think the animal responsible for this impressive silk structure should be classified as a cryptid or a known animal species, because sometimes the line can be blurry. But before we get into it, I want to give a quick shout out to the following patrons who have recently joined the Moonlit Mob. Thank you to my newest Bogart, Joseph Slinker, T. A. Zorik, and Brian Patak as ghosts, and Corey Davis stand up and Rob Nance as my newest poltergeists. To see how you can get your name shouted out in one of my videos, take a look at my Patreon. Thank you, and now I present to you the mystery of Silkhenge. Around June of 2013, Georgia Tech graduate student and scientist Troy Alexander was deep in the Peruvian jungle on an island near the Tambapada, Peru research area with the Macaw Project studying birds of the area. At some point, something odd and unrelated to birds caught his eye. He looked over and on the underside of a draped tarp, he saw this. At only two centimeters in diameter, it was something very small, very strange, and it was made of silk. Although oddly shaped, at first he thought it might be an ermine moth caterpillar that started making a cocoon but got interrupted while well in the process. That is until he found several more just like it, all within the general vicinity. It became clear that this wasn't an unfinished insect project. Whatever these things were, they were intentional creations that Alexander had never seen before. Ever curious, he asked the locals because surely they would know. But to his surprise, no one else knew what they were either. Unfortunately, because he was there to study birds, he wasn't allowed to do any experiments on the structure at the time. And so thinking someone somewhere must know what this thing is, he snapped a few photos of it. And when he got back to the States, he posted them on what is this bug subreddit under the academic title. Seriously, who makes egg cases like this? Just under two centimeters across Southern Peruvian Amazon. Immediately, people started hypothesizing on what the silky structure, which ultimately took on the name of Silkhenge, could possibly be. Some thought it was a fungus or mold. Others suggested, as Troy originally thought, that it was a cocoon of some sort, but no one seemed to actually know what it was. To his astonishment, it slowly dawned on him that he may have discovered a new species of something. In the words of Charlie Iserman, naturalist and bug blogger, photos of this intricate silken structure have been spread around sufficiently that it's pretty clear nobody, at least nobody with access to the internet, knows what made it. Iserman himself speculated that rather than some sort of cocoon, it was an egg sac for a spider. About six months after Troy had photographed the first silk henge, his colleague, etymologist Phil Torres, in December of 2013, made the trip out to the same small island near the Tambapada, Peru research area in hopes of finding more of the structures, but it wasn't an easy task. Torres told Wired, I'm surprised at how difficult this mystery is to solve. Keep in mind, at this point, only one other person had officially documented the silk henge. That was Troy Alexander. On the morning of December 10th, 2013, in the misty Peruvian jungle, Torres' team spotted their first henge, quickly followed by four more in the same confined area. At seeing them firsthand, Torres exclaimed, what the hell is that small? The structures they found were only six millimeters in diameter. Over the next few days, they found something like 50 structures, all in total. Most of them clustered together in groups of two to six on cecropia trees. Upon a close inspection of the silk itself, they determined that it wouldn't be made from any butterflies, moths, or fungi, ruling out Alexander's initial hypothesis and a lot of Reddit theories. As the days went by, Torres and his team continued to theorize 
exercise, wondering if the structures could have been made by mites, or even if the structure was what is known as a spermatophore, which certain insects and some arachnids create during mating. As their departure date grew closer, however, nothing else was gleaned, and they feared they would have to leave the island with nothing more than a few photographs. However, as luck would have it, on the 16th of December, as they were preparing to leave the island, Torres' team noticed that something had emerged from three of the structures. They were opened, and then suddenly, three small spiders were seen crawling. Although they didn't see anything emerge from the structures, it seemed to be confirmed that these were spiders' nests. Charlie Iserman, apparently, was right. There are a few problems with this, however. The, the size of the spiders in relation to the nests, if, if these three spiders came from the nest itself, it would indicate that only one baby spider would hatch from each nest which is unheard of. Female spiders generally lay hundreds if not a thousand eggs in one egg sac, not a single egg in a single nest, let alone building a castle around each individual egg sac. The parental investment alone in this type of behavior would be astronomical. It's essentially unheard of in the arachnid world. So it must be a new species, right? Well, hold on a second. Three years would go by and these silk hinges would be nowhere to be seen. Torres at this time was in Ecuador, where astonishingly he finds these structures again. And this time he's lucky enough to film a birth of one of these rare spiders. This time two emerge from one egg sac and this time they get a DNA sample. After checking the DNA database at the Canadian Center for DNA Barcoding, the spiders that hatched from the silk henge showed only an 86% match to any other known species of spider. So that means it's a new species, right? Well, PhD student Aaron Pomerantz admitted that it may already be a documented species based off its morphological characteristics as an adult spider, but it just doesn't exist in their database, at least the one they used at this time. So there has been progress made, but the results at this time are somewhat inconclusive. After this discovery in Ecuador, the hinges would vanish once again. No one could find them anywhere. However, after three Three more years in 2019, so really recently, they would be spotted again by, guess who? Torres. And he had been actively looking for them. This time, they were in the original spot where they were first discovered, on the island near Tambopata research area. But during this visit, no new information was gleaned. We still don't know what they look like as adults, where they go when they disappear for years on end, or really anything else. So let's just review some facts of this elusive creature. Number one, they are incredibly rare. Two, they are elusive, difficult to find even when you're looking for them. Three, very few people have ever reported seeing them. Four, they have been recorded or photographed even fewer times. Five, they make odd structures. Six, DNA results have come up inconclusive. Seven, they appear to move around in isolated regional pockets. And eight, their parental investment is extensive. Given these facts, it is absolutely clear that Bigfoot truly is an amazing I mean the silk hinged spiders truly are an amazing creature. I guess that's not a fair comparison to make because every year hundreds of people report seeing Bigfoot. I can't believe you guys watched all the way to the end. Just getting to this point, it means the world to me and it helps my channel more than you know. But if you feel like you could spare an extra dollar per month, consider supporting me on Patreon where you'll get just like all of these amazing people right here, your name in the credits as a financial backer of the Moonlit Ghost. But if you don't wanna to commit to Patreon just now, consider joining the Moonlit Mob for only 99 cents a month right here on YouTube itself as an official Moonlit Orb where you'll get this amazing loyalty badge 
that makes your comments stick out on my channel and also your name in the credits. And finally guys, last but not least, 10K in two months is in full effect. I'll send my hair, I'll send, I'll send my hair to locks of love if I hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Make sure to watch more of the Moonlit Ghost right here. Thank you. And remember, stay paranormal.